is one of the voices that you really need to hear in the WooCommerce space. Thank you. He's going to present a topic today, how to use a data-driven approach to optimize your e-commerce store for incredible results. Chris Lemma. Thank you. I don't know if you have ever received an email, right, that you know immediately was not meant for you. My name is Chris. My full name is Christian. It is not Christ. <laughs> so if I get an email that's sent to me, dear Christ, I'm like, well, I'm reading someone else's email. This is not mine. But you also get other kinds of emails that aren't for you, right? Like maybe you went and stayed at a hotel in another city because you were there for a friend's wedding or worse for a relative's funeral I went to a funeral I stayed at a hotel a year later they sent me an email and said it's been a year we haven't seen you when are you coming back that's not the kind of email that I wanted right and that's because more often than not most people in the regular business world and in the e-commerce world do not do enough with segmentation. So we're going to talk today about this idea of understanding audiences, breaking them down, and being effective with that. Right? That's what segmentation is all about. So let's get started. When we talk about businesses or stores, most of the time what happens is we talk in averages. right? It looks like this when it's a store, right? Purchases, 2,360, here's our total revenue, here's our number of customers, divvy it up. This is, we talk about the average. In real life, it looks like this car, which by the way, have any of you ever owned a 2001 Pontiac Aztec? No. Thank God, because I don't want to sit here mocking it and then find out that was your favorite car. This was car designed by committee, right? This was trying to hit every segment of the market all in one. In fact, you can't tell, but this back part of the car popped open and a tent was attached. There was an tent because, you know, when you're thinking about cars and driving to the supermarket, you're like, but what if I want to have a tent in the back, right? So people who own this car loved it, right? Because it had everything. It like there was something in it for the husband, something in it for the wife, something in it for the kids, like everybody. There was power adapters for every kind of device you might want to charge in the back. But it has been ranked consistently for years as in the top five worst cars ever. Right? Why? Because the people who made it played with the averages. They didn't talk to a specific type of person and say, how do we get a perfect camping vehicle or how do we get it? they just said let's get the perfect vehicle for the campers and for the shoppers and for the soccer moms and for the wit on and on and you end up with this horrific mess all right but what if you step away from averages right that store with the data that i was showing you on the side well it had an average order value or what we call aov of 68 dollars but 32 customers had an aov of 195 dollars 32 of their customers had significantly better average order values than the average. The same thing happened when we talked about LTV, the lifetime value of a customer, right? If you think about how often they're going to stay with you and how often they're going to buy from you and the average amount they're going to buy each time, and you sum all that up, you get lifetime value. 210 customers had LTVs of 185 instead of 76. The trick in e-commerce is not to play the averages, is not to talk about the averages. Instead, it's to find the pockets of people that are distinguished, different enough that you can do something with, right? So if you want to drive revenue growth with your online store, you need to think about segmentation. You need to focus on segmentation, okay? This is J. Crew. How many of you have heard of the brand J. Crew? Awesome, okay, let's talk about them. I come to this site, right? And if you take a look up here, right? You'll see they have men in the, there, there is a label up there that says men. That means I should be able to shop there, right? So I go to J. Crew, I click on men, I look at t-shirts, I look at shoes, I look at all sorts of stuff. And when I come back to the homepage, it still looks exactly like this. Even though my behavior 
suggested that I am someone who would like to look at male clothing, their homepage didn't change. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. Imagine if I go onto a car dealership lot, right? Pick whatever car is your favorite car. Imagine I go uh, to a Volkswagen dealership, right? And I walk to the section of the dealership that has the nicest cars. What salesperson in their right mind would be like, well, let me take you to one of our cheaper models over on this other side of the lot. They don't do that. They say, your behavior has demonstrated something that we should pay attention to. Right? You've heard it's not the destination, it's the journey. Well, in e-commerce, it is the journey. Every bit of the journey, right? Some people are browsing on Google and then they come to your homepage. Other people, you sent them an email and they come straight to your product page. From the homepage, they come to the product page. Then they go browsing around your site, looking at categories and other things. Then they come back and put something in the cart. From the cart, they decide some things they're gonna buy. And every single click, every step they take, everything they do on that site is telling you not only about their intentions, what they're looking for, right? But also who they are. And you can make, you can leverage that. You can make adjustments to your site based on that, all right? So organic buyers are people who, maybe they browse something. I, I bet most of you have done this. You go to Google, you ask it a question. You see several articles, you click one of the articles, right? Let's say that you are trying to deal with a weeds problem in your front lawn. So you go ask it, how do I deal with this? And you get an article. And in the article is a link to a product, right? And it's a special kind of weed killer that's organic, it's healthy, it won't hurt your dog. So you go from the search to the article, from the article to the product, take the product, stick it in your cart, and you buy it. But imagine that you're not that kind of person. Imagine you're not an or organic buyer, right? Imagine that you're a competitor. You're a competitor of another weed killer, right? And you come straight to the site, do a search, find the product, look at, put it in your cart, just to see what are they charging for it and what are they charging, what are they charging for shipping, right? You're in research mode. You never buy it. Wouldn't you treat those two people differently? Well, of course you would except that most of the time we just put up a website and then we're just like, oh, I hope we get orders. And we don't actually treat anything differently. Okay? The point of segmentation is not just to break up your audiences, but it's to understand which of those audiences is going to generate you more revenue and to start serving them better with better messaging and better interactivity. Does that make sense? That's what we're talking about today. We good? Awesome. All right. So you've heard of the 80-20 principle, right? Pareto's law. 20% of your audience is going to give you 80% of your revenue. I want to tell you that it's actually way more skewed than that. 5% of your audience is going to drive most of your revenue on your store. So you need to find the various different 5 percenters and support them figure out how to help them, figure out how to help them push the button click more often. Remember that earlier store with the numbers we were talking about, right? Well, if you take a look, right, 76 customers, it's only 5% of their base. 76 customers generate 17% of their revenue, right? $100,000 from them. I would want to know that every day of the week. And not only would I want to know it, I want to know how do I find them on the site? How do I find them before they put something in the cart? How do I help them put it in the cart? How do I help them get them back over to the site to buy something else again, right? I want to understand who these people are. And if you get little reports like this, right, you'll see this is the big ticket spender. Big ticket spenders are people who are buying your, or your, who have in their, in their cart a larger average order value than most. So you could know as people start putting things in their cart, if you go, okay, my cart normally, the average is $78. These guys are playing at $400. This person's special. What do I do about that? How do I help them? Okay. So I want to introduce you today in the time we have to six segments you should be thinking about. Okay. Six segments that you should pay attention to. There's a lot of others, right? But we're going to talk about six here. Okay. The first is first purchasers. 
people who have made a purchase on your site for the very first time. And even more importantly, right, you could caveat that to say, what about people who have made a purchase in a single session? Meaning they didn't come to your website, check it out, go home. Come back the next day, check it out, go home. Come back the third day. Some of you are smiling because this is who you are, right? You're like, I'm gonna go look, and then I'm, gonna, I'm not sure. Oh my God, $99, I ain't spending that. And you're like, oh my God, but oh, but look, it looks really good. And, like, and on the fifth visit, you're like, okay, fine, I'm gonna buy it, right? I'm not talking about that, though that's still first purchaser, right? But there are some first purchasers who are like, uh, I didn't even know that existed. Go to the site, look for it, find it, buy it, done. You go, first session, first purchase? Boy, I bought it. I better chase those folks down, right? I want to tag them, I want to know who they are, and I want to make sure that I am making sure they feel important and special, right? You can't tell from my appearance, but I'm not white. Um, I've also been large for a very long time. So when I go into a store as a Latino man who is heavy, Right? I don't fit the profile of, I have a, here's a guy with a lot of money who's going to buy something very expensive. So I will walk into a store and very quickly, right, I will know whether the salesperson in that store has been trained to discard my appearance and treat me as someone who may still spend a lot of money or someone who's just going to go, oh, he's just browsing around. If I catch the vibe that they don't care for me as a customer, I just turn around and walk out. That's fine. Not a problem with me. I'll go find it and buy something expensive somewhere else. But if you walk into certain stores, high-end stores, right? Mont Blanc. Uh, for women, it would be maybe a, a, a fancy purse store. You go into the more expensive shops. They've trained their staff, right? Do not judge a book by its cover. So I'll walk in the mall. Now, normally, if I don't want to get chased around by security, I have to dress up to go to the mall. But imagine that I'm walking into the mall with shorts and a t-shirt, whatever, and this was the case. We were on vacation, we came off a cruise ship, we were walking into town and they have a Mont Blanc store. And I walk in wearing shorts, sandals, t-shirt. And the guy looks at me and goes, how can I help you today, sir? And I go, ooh, looked me in the eyes, right, paid attention. Well, you know what he really did? He first looked at my watch and went, the guy has $10,000 on his wrist. Sir, how can I help you? <laughs> right? That's what we do with all these segments. If you can tag the customer, if you can figure out quickly what they represent, you can spend extra time. I'm not talking about not spending time with people who you decided weren't helpful. I'm talking about spending extra time with people who you go, okay, let me try and help you. Right? If someone comes into my store and buys on their very first visit, I want to make sure they get an email from me. I want to make sure that they know that, hey, thank you so much for trusting us with your money. I want to take care of you. Is there anything else? I would love to connect with you, hear more about why you made the purchase, what you did. All that to make sure that they come back a second time. Right? Then we have big spenders. Now, big spenders is when you look at the average order value, right? And you say, if I were to take all the people who've made purchases and I stack all their purchases and average out what's the average order value. So let's say I go to the Apple store, right? I go to the Apple store and I buy a phone. It costs me a thousand bucks. I go to the Apple store, I buy a computer. It costs me three thousand bucks. I go to the Apple store and buy a monitor, right? It costs me a thousand bucks. You go, okay, well, thousand, three thousand, one thousand, five thousand over three trips. Okay. This is his average order value. And if my average order value is up in the thousands, you go, okay, th this is, he's a big spender. Imagine if my wife goes in and she buys a case for $35, and then she buys a charger for $35, and then she buys uh, you know, a cable for $20. Her average order value is gonna be like $18, right? She's not gonna be tagged as a big spender, right? Now I walk into the Apple store and I feel sad. I walk in the store, I was in Seattle speaking at a conference there and I walked in the Apple store and the security guy goes, how's it going, man? I'm like, uh, I'm okay. He goes, you look a little down. I'm like, I own everything in this store. There's nothing new here for me to buy. I'm just waiting for Apple to come up with something new and cool. And he goes, rough life, man. And I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna leave now, right? I'm a big spender in the Apple store, right? I buy computers, I buy monitors, I buy stuff, my wife's not, that's fine. Do you know who I am? Can you tag me that way? Because I'm in the top 10% of spenders, right? That's important. VIP shoppers 
are a little different. A big spender is someone who buys large quantity or spends a lot of money in their purchases. A VIP shopper may not. Target thinks my wife is a VIP shopper. She never spends more than $100 or $200, but she goes every other day. Right? right? At some point, I was like, Melissa, if you go to Target one more time, I'm cutting off all your cards, right? What? I never spend a lot. I'm like, honey, you're only evaluating on a per instance basis. I'm looking monthly. We don't have a budget line that says Target. Like, what are you doing over there? She goes, I love Target. I just go in. I find all sorts of stuff, right? Now, I don't want to mock my wife because I'm the same way at Bed Bath & Beyond. And who knew, right? I walk into Bed Bath & Beyond, they cheer. Sirens go on, they're like, yeah, it's our guy. Because I can't leave that store without spending $500. I don't know how it is they do it, but I'm like, we don't have wall sconces. We need wall sconces. And then I'm like, oh, art. Look at that, it's three paintings that when you put them together, it's a one whole picture. We need that. She's like, you have run out of walls, right? You can no longer go. So I, I haven't been to Bed Bath & Beyond in like a year and a half because my wife won't let me go. The last time I went in, we were buying an air mattress for a friend, right? Friend was coming to visit and they were like, get an air mattress. And so I went in and I went to the site with the air mattress and I found one that was awesome, right? I mean, it just sounded right. And I took it to the front, it was like $600. But there was a long line behind me and I didn't want to get out of line, so I just bought it. I come home and Melissa looks at it and goes, I think this is better than our regular beds. <laughs> like, who does that? What's wrong with you? And I'm like, I wasn't paying attention to the price. I was just looking at the cool features. And it's like, you know, it's adjustable in an air mattress. And she's like, y you're, there's a problem with you. So <laughs> VIP shoppers, it's not about how much you spend. It's how much you spend over the time that you're in a relationship, right? Over the time, total lifetime value. If you're in the top, if you spend a lot of money with that place, you're a VIP shopper. Most active shoppers is different, right? Most active customers is do you go over and over and over, right? So again, Target would put Melissa in most active customers, right? Because she's there all the time. Years ago, I used to live in an apartment that was about a block away from uh, Barnes Noble. For those of you that don't remember Barnes Noble, it's, it's like Amazon, but in a physical building. So um, I would walk the block after dinner and I would go into uh, Barnes Noble every single night. That's just what I did, right? I, I was single and bored and I love books. So I'd finish dinner, I'd walk the block, I'd walk in, and after about a month, all the staff at Barnes Noble knew who I was. And they'd be like, oh, Chris, there's a great new book on political science over here. There's a great new history book over here. There's a great book, yeah, I, I don't know if you're into cooking, but this recipe book just came in. And they knew me by name because I went all the time. And I bought at least a book, right? I was reading about a book, I was finishing a book every two or three days, and so I just kept buying books from them, right? And they were like, oh, yeah, he's a very active customer. Now, in the case that we were talking about earlier, 2% of their customers bring in 24% of their revenue. Not in high ticket orders, right? Not, not from anything special. They're not buying the most expensive products. But they come so often, right, that just this 2% of people that show up at one of those stores will generate 24% of their revenue. You want to spend time paying attention to them. Then there are people like my buddy Seth. My buddy Seth does not know how time works or how the value of money works. All he knows is a coupon is a good thing. So my buddy Seth is the kind of guy who would spend three months analyzing every audio receiver, home theater equipment in the world, three months looking at everything and searching for coupons and pouring hours and hours into spreadsheets and everything else so he could save $120 on the thing. And you're like, do, do you not, like, my mom was like this, right? My mom would drive five miles away to the gas station that would give her 2% off. And you're like, you burned the gas to get there, right? But there are people who like a deal, right? And they like a deal, that's just it, right? It's a deal, I'm gonna take it. There are people who only ever buy with a coupon. Now, if you only ever buy with a coupon, what do you think as a store owner you should do? Send them a coupon, right? It's a trigger, like, here you go. There's a hotel in Half Moon Bay that I really love. Every now and then they send me an email that says, hey, we're doing a promotion, discount, whatever. That, it so happens, coincides with when we go to Monterey, right? We're like, oh look, there's a deal, yeah, let's go, right? There are people who only ever shop 
using coupons, right? Know who they are. And then there's people who put something in the cart and took off. What's your follow-up, right? 70% of the items that get put in a cart never get purchased, right? 70% cart abandonment, that's horrid. What are you doing to follow up and chase those people down, right? Just given an option, right? So, I work at a company called Liquid Web. Liquid Web is a hosting company. Uh, I am the, the VP of products there, and one of our products is a managed WooCommerce hosting platform. So we host WooCommerce stores. And one of the partnerships we did was with a company called Glue.io. And Glue.io, right, allows you to have these segments, three months since last purchase, 12 months since last purchase, lost, paying customers, high average order value, first purchase, VIP, big spenders, full price customers, repeat customers, value shoppers, that's the coupon people, <laughs> big ticket spenders, most active customers, all of these things, and it shows you how many orders, what's the total revenue from that segment, what's the average order value for that segment, and what's the LTV. It does that automatically. Now, if you went to glue on your own, you'd pay $300 a month, of course, with our hosting, you get it included. So um, we really love this for real store owners. Not if, if you're a little store and you're just checking it out, you, you probably don't need some of our plans, or at least we've created some other plans that don't have glue in it. But we built this, and the first deal I did was with glue because segmentation is so critical for your success. There are a ton of other partnerships that we've looked at since then. You can talk about tax, you can talk about fraud, you can talk about shipping. There's lots of other services, but if you don't get segmentation right, you don't make money. If you make money off segmentation, then suddenly everything else you can spend money on, right? So this was our first deal, our first partnership, right? And this, it does these segments without you having to pull out spreadsheets. Now, if you don't use Glue and you don't host with us, that's fine. You can totally run WooCommerce anywhere, but it means you're gonna export orders out and then start doing some work in spreadsheets, right? Again, not the end of the world, right? Especially if you let, you know, I, I work with stores that have five orders a day two orders a day. That's gonna mean at the end of the month, it's not gonna be a lot of work in the spreadsheet, but you're still gonna to have to do some of it. Okay, with or without glue, the trick here, the thing that matters most, is you have to learn how to tag those customers. When you see the kind of behavior that we're talking about, when they're buying certain things and, and other stuff, you want to be able to tag that customer in different ways in your e email or CRM system. So whether you use ConvertKit or MailChimp, ActiveCampaign, Agile CRM, and some of those products have their own plugin that connects to WooCommerce like ConvertKit. Others you can do with WP Fusion, right? Let me show you what it looks like if you're gonna use WP Fusion. It's really, really interesting, right? You can say, hey, I want you to automatically create a, a record in something like ConvertKit but only for customers. So only for the role where someone made a purchase. But when they make a purchase, what I want you to do is I want you to put, hey, segmentation, new customer. I want you to put that tag against them, right? Now you could do other things like specifically in the product, if they bought a leather bag, and if they bought a leather bag that was a, your more expensive leather bag, right? So let's say that you're selling several different items, but one category is leather bag, and in that category, you know that there's three or four bags that are the signals that like, mm, this guy or gal is spending good money on a leather bag. So you, in the ConvertKit extension for WooCommerce, you go in and you say, hey, uh, tag them, if they buy this product, tag them as category spender in bags, right? Then if you're using something like Beaver Builder, right? This is the heading module in Beaver Builder. You can come to visibility and in display, you can say, look for the user tag and look for segmentation category spender bags. Meaning, show them this headline if they're this kind of person and don't show them this headline if they're not. Imagine you start being able to make changes to your site based on the tags that are coming from your system. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, with the rest of our time, and we're doing pretty good on time, I want to introduce you to six things you can do with those six segments that we had before. Okay? Six things you can do with your store. So the first, I told you about going to uh, J. Crew, and when I went into J. Crew and I browsed the men's section and I came back to the homepage, nothing had changed. 
This is Urban Outfitters. And Urban Outfitters looks really, really different now, right? When I got to Urban Outfitters, it was all women. Bikini, there was a bikini, there was towels, there was sandals, there were a lot, there was a, uh, a sundress, right? A bunch of women in nice women clothing and, and accessories. And then I clicked men and I went to look at a t-shirt, a sweatshirt, and a pair of shoes. Three clicks. Then I came back to the homepage and look what happened. Pants, shoes, jackets, pictures of all men. They looked at the click stream and they went, uh, this guy's interested in male clothes. Let's make sure when he comes back to this homepage, he sees male clothes, okay? So after browsing for three clicks, right, homepage was transformed. And you go, yes, now I'm feeling more comfortable. I'm feeling like this is for me. I'm feeling at home. I'm likely to buy here because they're showing me the stuff I like. So you go, okay, how? How do you do that, right? Well, there is a product called Right Message, right? And Right Message lets you change things based on the tags that you have in your CRM, but also tags you give them just because you've put them in based on clickstream. So for example, I created on a sample site, I created these categories, noise canceling, Bluetooth, in-ear, on-ear, and over-ear. Why? It's about headphones, and I love headphones. In fact, I love them enough that my wife says I have a problem with headphones. <laughs> well, I created this sample site of headphones, and then I said, hey, I want to auto segment. And for noise canceling, if you land on this page, product category, headphones, noise canceling headphones, right? Or if you came from a custom URL that had ref equals noise canceling, or if your path in your browsing contains that category, right? And you visited at least once, tag you as noise canceling, right? I don't even have to know you. I don't have to know your name. I don't have to have your email address. I just have to know either you came in through, so imagine that I wrote you an email. My system sent you an email and in that email, I put the link that said ref equals noise canceling. I just, I put it on, appended it to the URL because I was writing about noise canceling headphones in this email. So when you click the link that says, come to writesell.io, right? You click the link, but I'm carrying the ref and I then automatically tag you as someone who's interested in noise canceling. But imagine you were just browsing and you went from the home page into noise canceling. You spent some time there, you came back out to the home page. I can change it based on the fact that I've now tagged you, right? Does that make sense? You see what I'm talking about? Okay, so here's, what, here's how it works. When you get to this fake site, at this point it's called writesell.io, when you get to this fake site, and you have never been there before, you get a tagline that says, all the best headphones. There's a woman, she's got headphones on, and up here in the nav, it has all headphones, and it has Bluetooth, and noise canceling, and uh, in-ear, on-ear, and over the ear, right? Those are the, those are the navs. But if you browse the noise canceling, or the Bluetooth section, and in fact, because I don't care that much about Bluetooth, you actually have to browse the Bluetooth three times. But if you browse the noise canceling first or just once, when you come back to the home page, totally different hero image, right? I just said, change the back, just make, now it doesn't know you at all. And notice it doesn't say, hi Chris, I've been watching you. I know you like noise canceling headphones. Here's the best one for you. That's creepy, <laughs> right? That's personalization gone wrong. Nobody wants that, right? This just changes the title and the background image. And so you go, okay, that's cool. What about if you are a big spender or VIP? Shouldn't I just make sure that my products sort, the ones I really want you to spend, sort to the top? It's really easy. Slash question mark order by equals price descending, meaning put your most expensive products at the top. That's what's going on right up there, right? In the URL, it just adds that little piece, right? You can easily do that. You can even do that when you're writing an email to someone. When you're sending them a link, you just go, hey, I'm sending an email to all my big spenders. Just wanna let you know, we got one of the new Singer sewing machines in, but when they go to the page to check it out, 
the most expensive ones are at the top. Because a big spender doesn't want to start by looking at your cheap ones or have random orders and start clicking next and next and next. I just bring it right to the top. Does that make sense? And it's not hard. It's just a little string. Right? What about light pressure? Light pressure. If you have researchers, you know those people that spend a large amount of time and very few checkouts, right? You tag them as a researcher, then you go, I need to give them just a little bit of push. So what happens, right? I'm looking at this property in New York, right? It's the uh, Midtown Hilton, and it says, hey, 74% of the rooms are booked, and rooms are going fast, and then it says 60 people are viewing the property right now. Huh? <laughs> yeah. I better, I, but notice it's, it's light pressure, right? It's not fake pressure. They're not telling me, buy now or you'll never get a room again, right? They're not being crazy. They're just saying, heads up, right? We're already, we're, or yeah, we're already at three quarters full. And by the way, 60 people are looking right now, right? I don't know if there are really 60 people. I don't know if there's only one, <laughs> me. But it makes, you know, just a nice little added pressure. And you might do that on your store, but only for researchers to help them. For other people that are known, you know, like if you know this guy's gonna buy, why would you go in and add more pressure? You're like, no, it's all good, right? It's low pressure environment. But for a researcher, you go, let me add a little oomph. So, so many of these sites were like that. There's a little, like, roller down at the bottom that says, you know, Cindy, J. Yep. Jersey just, just purchased. And that little thing starts spinning like a, a slot machine at, at Harris, right? Yeah. And does that take that too far? So it depends on how they do it. There are some systems that do it realistically, meaning they're pulling from the orders. And so those will pop up every now and then, like, oh, someone from Newport Beach just purchased. Oh, someone from Valencia just purchased, right? Like, there's some of those. And then there are others that are more like, who? <laughs> Look and, look and look and look and you're like there's not that many people on the planet i'm sorry it's fake right that overkills it so you just want to you want to make sure you do it right um another thing you can do for coupon lovers is you can use a product like ahoy right at use ahoy to basically give them a coupon when they put something special in their cart right so you say oh look i don't know who these people are but if someone puts one of these more expensive products in cart i'm happy to pop up a thing that says hey uh you can also look at cookies and say they've never visited here before, right? So you could say, hey, your first time visitor, right? Uh, love to give you 5% coupon here. And that would just help them go from putting in the cart to putting them to checkout, right? Use Ahoy has all sorts of conditions for WooCommerce, which is awesome. You can also do exit intent when they're leaving. Be like, hey, before you go, here's a deal, right? And then cart abandoners, right? We talked about cart abandonment. We use a product called Jilt. Jilt lets you do all sorts of fun things. In this particular case, I set it up where I say, hey, after they walk away, this is my other sample site called Finest Headphones. And at Finest Headphones, if you put something in your cart and leave, within two hours, you'll get the first email. Then 24 hours later, you get another email. Then three days later, you get another email. And then seven days. The magic number is seven. If you can't get them back after seven, they're never coming back. So I sent four emails between the time you put in your cart and to seven days out. And those emails will sound different and work different, right? You can see the titles here. Like, hey, this is just from us at Finest Headphones. The next one, Chris, did you forget something? Hey, we're still holding the cart for you. And then, uh, hurry, your cart's going to expire soon. Do you know what people do now with their cart? They use it as a to-do list. Like, it's late at night. You're putting something in your cart. Now, you shouldn't shop like I shop, right? Two in the morning, I shop. And I don't even remember that I bought it the next day, right? That's not good. What you want to do, some people do, is they put it in the cart and then they're like, I'll come back later and buy it. But then they forget that they did it. And you're going, where was that site where I found that cool thing? And I don't know, uh, I don't remember. So you send them an email saying, hey, we're about to empty your cart. No, no harm, no foul, no pressure. We're just going to empty it out. And they go, no, not yet. Let me click the link and go buy it. And you're like, thank you very much. <laughs> All right. And then the last one is repeat buyers right? Repeat buyers. This is a particular integration I did with a product called ConvertKit, which does emails and has tags. And what I wanted to do was say, hey, the first time you buy something, we're going to look at a custom field. And the custom field is called total purchases. And so when you come in for the first time ever and you make a purchase, I'm going to take total purchases and I'm going to see this blank. and I'm going to make it from zero to one. 
and then after one, I'm gonna make it two, and then after two, I'm gonna make it three. And so you create this little logic that moves it down. After three, I'm gonna add another tag called repeat buyer. And now that customer has repeat buyer on it. So now what do I do? Exclusive to only you, my best customers. I wanna tell you about a special deal, a special price, a special location, here's the link, go now. It's only gonna be there 24 hours, but it's only for you. Please don't tell anyone else this is exclusive to just you, right? But I can send it to my repeat buyers who are likely to buy. Make sense? So basically your mom was wrong. You shouldn't treat everybody the same. My name is Chris Lemma. I work at a company called Liquid Web. You can find me at Twitter at, at Chris Lemma. Thank you very much. And I think we now have 10 minutes for Q&A. Anyone have any questions? And if not, you can just go early, right? Because I think, is it lunch next? I think I'm going to get you out early for lunch. Yeah. So, uh, excellent presentation. Yeah. The information is just so top. I mean, you're right at the top. But I want to know how many times... Did you just say a but after that? You're like, I just want to let you know, best presentation ever, but... When you say but, it's like it nullifies everything I just said. Right? <laughs> um, so the question is, how many times have I been confused uh, for Fluffy? And um, uh, only once, really? he and I were both in Hawaii the same week. I was about 100 pounds heavier. Uh, I did have a very short haircut at the time, no hat. I was wearing a Hawaiian shirt and jean shorts only because my wife had bought them for Christmas and I was like, I should wear them at least once. So I was wearing the jean shorts, flip flops, the Hawaiian shirt, very short haircut and was heavier. And I walked to the airport and everybody stopped and they're like, is it, is it, is it him? And so someone walks up to me and goes, is it you? And I go, yes, <laughs> it is I. It is and then, and then he's like, oh my God, can I get your autograph? I'm like, to be clear, it's going to say Chris Lemon, not Fluffy. And he was like, oh, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, once. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes? On Liquid Web, would there be tutorial videos? Like if people want to learn more because you create great info and like to dig deeper? Uh, so the question was at Liquid Web, do we have tutorial videos to help learn more? Here's a beautiful thing. You don't have to buy anything from Liquid Web. I regularly do like a monthly podcast on, or a monthly uh, webinar on e-commerce stuff that you could go learn and get access to all those for free. And then I have a podcast on e-commerce where we rolled out the first 10 episodes called Store Builders and that's also all free. So you don't have to become a Liquid Web customer to get access to good information. Is it YouTube or? Uh, the podcast is still at our site. The videos are on our site, but I think the videos are on YouTube. So um, you can look at the web for that. Yep. Any other questions? Is this for a cell phone or? Is that for a cell phone? That's a great question. That is a liquid web uh, device that you attach to the back of the cell phone and it functions as both a stand to have your phone held up and a ring, you can put your finger in it and hold it up. It is the shape of the teardrop, which is our logo. So it's all fancy all at once. Thanks. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, anyone have any e-commerce questions? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Absolutely. You can use any of these tricks anywhere, right? So you have, to, you have to get tools and you have to know what you're doing to do it, right? But the ability to tag someone as a researcher, right? Someone who spends a lot of time and doesn't actually close. Uh, in the Airbnb world, you might say, okay, how often do they come back to this property and they don't, you know, they keep looking, but they don't close. They keep looking, they don't close. And then you say, okay, the third time they visit, you can drop a cookie. And, and then the third time they visit, let's add a little more pressure, right? Um, I, you would use something like write message because write message would allow you to change the text on the screen without using the Airbnb system. So that's how you'd pull that off. Yeah. Okay, so the question is, how can this help with the subscription business? So uh, almost everything here is going to count. The only difference is, uh, more often than not, in the subscription world, the metrics you're looking for aren't purchase related like we did here because the purchase is auto purchase. So then you're going to change some of these metrics not to be the most active purchaser, but maybe the mo most active visitor. So you might look at who's logging in. Uh, I build a lot of SaaS products and I would always look at 
how long does it take for someone to come back and log in five times, right? And so if they log in five times in three days, awesome. If they log in five times in three months, not so awesome. Gonna tag them differently and react to them differently. Does that make sense? Yeah. So how do you apply uh, these techniques to guest checkouts? So the question is, how do we apply these techniques to guest checkouts? Well, some, several of those techniques were not predicated on me having to have you in my CRM, right? So click stream analysis, uh, length of time on the site, those things you can do uh, without having them be logged in and be guests. But there's some that are harder, right? So if, I, if you spent a certain number of minutes on the site and visits, certain number of visits on the page, I might add a little light pressure and I could do that with the right message. Uh, based on your click stream, I might change what is visible or what shows up or even change the text based on where you came from. Right, the URL refer, I could potentially change some things. So for example, if you came from Men's Health Magazine, I might change the homepage even before you, the first time you visit to make it more male centric. And if you came from uh, women's something or other, right, I might adjust it that way, right? So some of those things you can still do anonymously. So the referring URL, time on site, path visits are all things I would use to help shape that exp experience. Yeah. Right message is a SaaS service. It is not a plugin. It can be used on any technology. So you can use it on a Shopify store or a WooCommerce store or your regular website. Yeah. Yeah. The technology really sounds awesome. How complicated is it to get started? Does it need to be a great presentation? Thank you. Um, so the question is, the technology looks amazing. How hard is it to use? The ConvertKit plugin that sends data into your e-commerce store based on what they bought or whatever is super, super simple. The right message on the other side, which is analyzing stuff and creating campaigns automatically, that takes a little more work, but uh, it's possible to do. And in fact, they have people that when you, um, when you sign up, right, they'll have some people who can help you through some of that, right? So there's a little bit of onboarding that, that helps with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have a lot of experience with the glue from WordCommerce, uh, WooCommerce into Authorize.net? Because I know it doesn't come with the base WooCommerce. Right. So the question is, uh, he uses WooCommerce, he uses Authorize.net as a payment gateway. Do I have any experience with that? So I built the first, one of the first e-commerce stores to hit uh, Authorize.net in 1996. I've been using them ever since. Uh, yes, you have to purchase a payment gateway. It's not free with WooCommerce. If you purchase it, that will make you, that will help you connect. The real trick with Authorize.net is not the connection. The real trick is that there are two or three different versions of Authorize.net inside of Authorize.net. Meaning you can connect and be like, ooh, it works, but later you go to do something, right? And it doesn't happen and you go, why not? And they go, oh, you're using the, the one that doesn't have the CIM, which is the uh, customer information manager. Or you say, no, no, you get on a phone call, I want the customer information manager, CIM, and they go, yo, you got it. And then you go do something else and it doesn't work. And then you're like, why? And you call them and they go, oh, you have CIM1, not CIM2. And you're like, wow, how do, how do I call you and just tell you I want it all to work and then you're never a jerk to me? What do I have to say to make that happen? So that's the hard part. But if you purchase the, the um, gateway on WooCommerce.com, they have extensions. And if you purchase the Authorize.net gateway there and you call Authorize.net on the phone and tell them, I'm gonna be doing subscriptions or I'm gonna be doing this, or I'm gonna be doing that. I need your CIM and I need the best one that does this. They will set you up. So you're saying the, the WooCommerce version of the plugin. Well, is, it's... The, the authorized.net extension that you can buy from WooCommerce.com is the one I recommend. I, I, there are a lot of other sites that sell a lot of other stuff a lot cheaper and they're not necessarily the same. All right, I think that's it. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day, have a great lunch, and we'll see you back after lunch. <laughs>